Today's question is about workout timing and how do you know when you should do your workouts, whether or not you can just pack all your workouts into a couple days and take the rest of the week off, or how you actually need to structure your workouts to kind of get the best training effect. So I figured this one is the easiest uh, just to kind of draw out and give a diagram. So uh, I have a whiteboard here and we're going to kind of talk it through. So this is essentially what happens to your body after uh, you do a hard workout. So our first hard workout is this red star here and the green dotted line kind of down the middle is our current fitness level. So this is today, this is down the road kind of into the future. So that green dot is what our current fitness level is. We do a workout and the whole point of a workout is to break your body down. So you're breaking down muscle tissue, you're breaking down uh, bone tissue, you get micro fractures in your bones, um, you're breaking down all of your different body systems with that workout that you're doing. So that workout could be a long run, it could be an intensity run where you're doing intervals or running faster, it could be a tempo run, anything that's kind of your challenging focus workout for the week. The whole goal of that workout is to break your body down. What that does is when you break your body down, it acts as a stimulus to stimulate your body to respond to that and get better. So your body says, okay, well, I've, I need to be able to withstand this level of punishment. I need to prepare for that. So your body goes through all the different processes to get itself ready for, um, for that next stimulus the next time that happens. So what happens is you do your workout and then this black line is actually what your fitness does when you, when you do your workout. So your fitness goes down, you have broken your body down and you're kind of down in a hole here. So from there, you start to build your body back up. So you've done that initial damage and then your body will slowly recover. Fitness will get better. And then we actually overshoot that dotted green line and we have this little bit of super compensation here. So that super compensation fitness is better here than it was when you did that initial workout because you've adapted to that workout and everything's happened. So from there you super compensate and then fitness if you did absolutely, so this is if we did one workout and then absolutely no workouts after that. Then after that super compensation fitness just kind of gradually tapers off back down to where we started. And then if you continued to do nothing, it would just continue kind of that slow decline. So uh, in terms of workout timing, we want to make sure that we're hitting our first workout here and we want to take advantage of that super compensation. So we want to make sure that we're doing our next workout kind of in this period when we have this elevated fitness level. That way, when we do that next hard workout, we can take advantage of that better fitness, work a little bit harder and continue to build on that. So basically we would start from here we would do this same cycle again where we're going down, but it wouldn't go down quite as far. It's going to be kind of down somewhere in here. So if I was to draw, draw that second workout on. And take out that other one, it would end up looking something like this. So we've kind of injured, very slightly injured our body, beat it down. We've started to come back. We've super compensated. We do our next hard workout. Fitness again is going to go down and then it's going to start to come up and it's going to be even higher than that peak that we got to here. So over time, we have this ripple effect of these waves of kind of recovery and stress building up over the course of the season. Um, the worst thing that we can do is do these workouts too close together. So obviously if we space, first off, if we space them out really far, and we did that next workout way out here, you're already back at that initial fitness level and you're not gonna gain anything from that. So if you're doing one workout a week or if you're doing one workout every other week, that's way too spaced out and you're not actually gonna progress from that. With spacing like this, um, it works really nicely if you can hit that next workout in this zone here. And then the worst thing we can do is do that next workout too early. So if we've done our, done our hard workout here, so we've done intervals or we've done our long run, if we head out too soon, and we go and like hit something the next day or some, like if we do a really big long run and do like take a day off and then do another really big long run the day after that, um, a lot of times you're not gonna be kind of back up into this area here. You're gonna be somewhere on this bottom end of the curve. So what ends up happening there is if we do our next hard workout somewhere in here, our fitness is depressed and then we get this another big hit to it. So it's gonna go down something like that. Then if we don't come all the way back and our next workout was there, then we're gonna do that. So all of a sudden, our fitness is on this big downward trend. That's where you start to get into the realm of overtraining, uh, overreaching, and 
kind of it continues on this downward progression. So you can use this slightly in very small doses if you plan really, really well. There is some planned overreaching or planned overtraining that you can do where you would do maybe a few days of this, like once per training cycle, something like that. You would do a few days of this and then you would build in a really nice recovery period. So you're gonna be way down here and then you let your body bounce back up and let it recover from that. So it's really important to make sure that you're spacing those workouts properly. Um, and that's the reason why you want to always have at least one day in between your harder workouts and um, kind of always be thinking about like, when was that last workout? How have I recovered from then till now? So if you do a hard workout and then life is terrible and you're on your feet all day at work, that's not really a recovery day. So you're going to end up still being kind of somewhere on this bottom end of the curve when that happens. So that's kind of the basics behind workout timing. There's a lot more to it. So if you have any more questions, always shoot us a message and let us know. Um, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.